man who strikes terror into the very hearts of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today we present the shadow in one of his most remarkable adventures, a modern mystery of science and crime, The Phantom Voice. In just a moment, the shadow begins his exciting adventure. Meanwhile, I'd like to tell you how you can safeguard the health and comfort of your family during these dangerous winter months. Burn Blue Coal. It gives you safe, uniform, helpful heat all winter long. And for valuable heating information that will save you real money regardless of the fuel you're using, send tonight for John Barclay's free 24-page book, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Address a postcard to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Don't miss out by delaying. Send for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home right at the close of this program. Here we are. Here we are, Margaret. Let me help you on. All right. Thank you, Lamont. This way, Margot. Lamont Cranston, where on earth are you taking me? We're on our way to the criminal court, Margot. The criminal court? Oh, a murder trial. Mm, this isn't a murder trial. Unless I'm badly mistaken, we're going to witness an assassination. What? An assassination. The assassination of the character and reputation of one of the most outstanding public men in America today. Oh, you mean Senator Durham? Yes. They have been reading about his trial in the papers. They've certainly unearthed plenty of evidence that he accepted that bribe. Well, unless I've made a mistake in character analysis, that evidence is forged. Durham is more than a political figure, Margot. He's a statesman. He has an independent income. He's devoted his life to unselfish public service. Oh, he's a very wealthy man. Yes, Margot. Senator Durham has given away ten times the amount of money he's accused of taking as a bribe. Well, if that's true, Lamont, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should a man like that take a 15-year prison term for taking a bribe he didn't need? That's the point that worries me. Incidentally, didn't I see that the prosecution expect to spring a surprise bit of evidence today? Exactly. That's why we're here. Come along, Margot. Court's already in session. such outburst on the part of the spectators of this trial, and I shall order the courtroom cleared. Proceed, Mr. Defense Attorney. Your Honor, I have stated the case for my client. <laughs> I have shown that by his record, it would have been impossible for him to act as the prosecution claims he has acted. And I have yet to see any proof that Senator Durham has committed any crime. <laughs> I will now call Senator Durham himself to the stand to deny these lies in person. Senator Durham to the stand. Here I am. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Proceed with the examination. Senator, you've heard the prosecution's accusations 
that you did it sometime during last December accept a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi? Yes. What is your answer? I never accepted a bribe from anyone. My answer is the whole thing is a pack of lies. <laughs> order! Order in the court. Your witness, Senator Durham. Do you deny that on the 16th of December last, you received a visit from the late Mario Rinaldi in your room at the Maximilian Hotel? Why, no. He came to see me and Confine I... Confine yourself to specific answers. Gentlemen of the jury, the defense has made much of the senator's long and seemingly illustrious career of public service. They would have you believe that, like Caesar's wife, the defendant, Senator Durham, is above suspicion. They paraded witnesses to the stand who've told you of his philanthropies, of his unselfish devotion to public service, <coughs> of his blameless personal life in the past. That we do not contest, refute, nor deny. But unfortunately for Senator Durham, he is not being tried for his past. We, the prosecution, need but one more bit of evidence to complete our case. We have that evidence. Order. Order in the court. I beg leave to show the jury a soundtrack motion picture of a meeting between the defendant of the late Mario Rinaldi, whose bribe of $50,000 paid to the defendant is the basis upon which this case was brought to trial. Order. Order in the court. Has this motion picture a direct bearing on this case, Mr. Prosecutor? It has, Your Honor. Has the counsel for the defense any objection to the introduction of this type of evidence without due notice? Senator Durham has nothing whatever to fear from the introduction of any authentic motion picture record of any meeting of Mario Rinaldi and himself, even though the picture was made without the senator's knowledge. Very well. The projection equipment is in the courtroom. Will you order the shades drawn and the lights extinguished? Court attendants will please draw the shades. Again, I caution the spectators against any outbursts of any kind. Furthermore... No one will be allowed to leave the court until the introduction of this evidence is complete. You may proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. With the court's permission, we will place the screen in full view of the jury. Your Honor. Counsel for the defense has a question. For the sake of the record, will the prosecution state at whose request this motion picture was made? It was made at the request of Anthony Vogel, an attorney of this city. For what reason? As a citizen interested in public welfare. Very well. Now, if the attendant will turn out the light. Order. Silence in the court. The prosecution will submit affidavits to prove that this is an authentic film record of a meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi on the evening of December 16th. You may turn on the machine. Yes, sir. Yes? Come in. Oh, hello, Rinaldi. I've been expecting you. Look here, Senator Durham. Why haven't I got the contract award on that Bethesda building? The money's been appropriated. You said you'd use your influence if we fixed you up. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi. I told you you'd get that contract. For consideration. If you didn't send me my present of 50000 for swinging it your way, so that's the way I... Oh, so that's it. Do you want to be paid off first, huh? Yes. And in cash. No checks. Okay. You get your 50 grand. Get me that contract. I'll be back in an hour with your money. Order. Order in the court. Order. Order in the court. That's the end of the film, gentlemen. It's a lie. A lie. I tell you, I never said that. Order. Order in the court. Your Honor, I object. My client never had such a conversation with Mario Rinaldi. That picture is a fake. One moment. Attendants will please turn on the light. Your Honor, allow me to remind the counsel for the defense that pictures do not lie. Your Honor, we do not deny that the meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi did take place in the manner shown in this film, but we deny that any such conversation took place. Have you any proof of that? There are only two people who could know what went on in that room. Senator Durham and Rinaldi. And Rinaldi is dead. Do you deny... The voice was the voice of the defendant. My client admits that it sounds like his voice, but it cannot be, since he never asked or received a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi for any reason or purpose whatever. Your Honor, 
I ask a recess of this trial in order that the defense may have an opportunity to study this film and soundtrack. I object. I do not see how the due process of law will be impaired by a 24-hour delay. Objection overruled. Courts adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Lamont, after seeing that talking picture of Senator Durham meeting Rinaldi and practically demanding a bribe, how can you, how can anyone doubt his... Margot, the Greeks had a philosophy that ran something like this. Only believe half that which you see and nothing you hear. Oh, but Lamont, that wasn't hearsay evidence. That was the senator speaking. That was his voice. Even he couldn't deny No man knows the sound of his own voice, Margot. Besides... Durham never spoke those words to Rinaldi. But you saw him. You saw the motion picture. Exactly. Because I did see him speak, I know he didn't say the things that were on the soundtrack of that film. What do you mean, Lamont? Have you ever watched the movement of a man's jaw muscles when he speaks certain words? You mean you know what he really said? No. No, his face was half averted from the camera. I couldn't see his lips. I don't know just what he did say, but I know he didn't utter the words we just heard. Oh, but Lamont, it was still the senator's voice saying those other things, demanding that bribe. I, I'd swear to Yes, you. and so will the jury, Margot. Unless something is done within the next 24 hours, one of the finest men in this country, an innocent man, Senator Durham, is going to be railroaded into prison for 15 years by his political enemies. I'm stopping here, Margot. I uh, want you to wait in the car, please. All right. The lawyer's building. What are you going to do here, Lamont? I'm going up to the 25th floor, Margot. The shadow has an appointment with one of the most crooked lawyers in this city. Anthony Vogel was so interested in the public welfare that he went to the trouble of having a sound camera planted in Senator Durham's hotel suite the night of December 16th. While we are waiting for the shadow to return, I would like to ask all homeowners a question. Do you want to save money? Of course you do. And you begin real saving when you cut down on the cost of heating your home. Here's the easiest and surest way to do this. Decide now to cook and heat with blue coal. Here's why blue coal is more economical. It is prepared especially for use in the home. And blue coal is Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that furnaces, cooking ranges, and parlor stoves in this section of the country were especially designed to burn. It is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest producer of specially prepared home fuel. And every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and size before shipment. And you can always be sure of getting this superior home fuel because it is tinted with an unmistakable blue color so that you can easily identify it at a glance. In Waverly, New York and vicinity, blue coal sales so far this winter are 27% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. This increase in sales is because Waverly families have found out that blue coal does all I say it will do. So I urge all families throughout this region to try blue coal. Order a trial ton tomorrow. Ask for blue coal by name in any one of four sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Well, Mr. Vogel, you certainly put it over. That sound picture sure turned the trick. Yes, but I'm still worried, Travers. Ah, uh, there ain't nothing to be worried about. Senator Durham's as good as on his way to the pen right now. Well, I won't feel happy until he is. When are you going to get me a wrestling bout, boss? A wrestling bout? Yeah, it's about time I was getting in the ring again. And, well, I could stand the extra dough. Forget you're a wrestler, Travers. You'll make more money in this racket as my bodyguard. Any calls while I was down at court? 
Yeah, Wilson phoned a couple minutes ago. Why didn't you say so? Well, you didn't ask me. What did he want? I wanted to talk to you. And hey, what do you suppose he wants? Dough? I've paid him all he's going to get. Say, maybe he's read in the afternoon papers what we're really using that soundtrack for. If he gets white-livered and talks... Well, uh, maybe we should fix him so he can't talk, huh, boss? What do you mean? Well, he could fall out of that 15-story apartment of his, accidental-like. He'd only have to fall once. It might be a good plan. Okay, you want me to go over there now and take care of it, boss? No. No, there's no sense doing anything about him until we have to. But the first sign of anybody getting wise to what we're doing, then we'll arrange a neat little accident for friend Wilson. Well, now, Doug, now let's take a look at that Wesley murder case. <laughs> One case at a time, Mr. Vogel. What, what was that? Suppose we review the evidence of the case against Senator Durham. What, what sort of devil's trick is this? Who are you? I am the shadow, Vogel. But I, I can't see you. Nevertheless, Vogel, I am here in the shadows. Gee, what? Somebody's talking and nobody's here. Get up, Travis. I'll handle this. Oh. So you're the shadow, eh? You come here to play your hypnotic tricks on me. What do you know about Senator Durham's business? I know everything about it. I've been listening to your interesting conversation about this Mr. Wilson. He seems to play an important part in your case against Senator Durham. Listen, Shadow. I've heard plenty about you. I don't want to fight you. How much do you want to keep out of this? Always the fixer. How much, Shadow? There isn't enough money in the world to cover up what you're trying to do, Vogel. Who is this man? Wilson. What part did he play in this scheme of yours? Oh, so you don't know. You're just trying to find out, are you, Shadow? Travis, lock the door. Okay, boy. That's locked. Melodrama won't help you, Vogel. What, if I can only see this guy, I can... Come on, Travis. We don't need to see him. What do you mean, Come over here. Give me your hand. Well, okay, but it don't make much sense. You'll see. All right. Stand up with me against this wall. Now, stretch out your arms. Can you touch the side wall on that side? Yeah, I can touch it. Good. I can touch it on my side. Now, walk slowly to the other end of the room and don't let your fingers leave the wall. Oh, I get it. Then the shadow can't get past us. Yeah, huh? You're quick. Now, walk forward slowly. Slow, you fool. Okay. Well, I... I don't feel nothing. We're almost to the end of the room, boss. Maybe he got away. No, no, he, he couldn't go through the door. It's locked. The window is locked, too. Hey, boss, I felt something. Huh? I got him. I got a hold of him, boss. Uh, I can't see him, but I got him. I got the shadow around the throat. He's a man after all. Gee, Strong. Would kill him, Travers. Maybe. Maybe he can. He's choking me. Give me a gap, boss. I'll shoot him. You don't need a gun. It'll make too much noise. He's weeping, boss. Kill him, Travers. Give him your famous stranglehold. If he doesn't let go, he'll kill me. Yes, yes, Shadow. This is where you die. Finish him off, Travers. I've got to hurry and take care of Wilson before he gets a chance to talk. trying to get hold of me earlier this evening. Yes, that, that's right. I uh, want to talk to you. Won't you come in? Are you alone? Oh, yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Vogel, when you asked me to do some work for you, I I didn't ask to know what you were going to do with it. I needed the money for my wife, Alice, and kids, and I... You got paid, didn't you? Yes, but... I mean... Well, all this stuff in the papers, Mr. Vogel, about the... Frankly, I, I don't like it. Oh, you don't. Having a little attack of conscience, Wilson? Well, doing a job is one thing, but sending a man away to prison on a false charge is, is something else. 
So I, I intended to tell you that... Tell me what? Well, to tell you that I refuse to let it go on any further. Oh. You refuse? Yes. After all, Mr. Vogel, if I tell what I know of, about... Well, what are you going to do about it? Just this. Don't move, Wilson. Put that gun down. Don't be a fool, Vogel. I'm not the fool, Wilson. No. Turn your back to me. That's right. What are you going to do? I'm going to assist at a little accident. No. Walk to that window. Wait. You can't do this to me. You can't. Walk. Okay. Now, open the window. All right, Wilson. I'm up on the windowsill. Just a moment, Mr. Vogel. The shadow. I I thought Travis took care of you. You thought Travis took care of me, did you, Vogel? Well, I admit he's a good wrestler. But there was one little hole, Vogel, I learned in the Orient. But he didn't know. He had me beaten for a moment. It was my one chance to get you to lead me to Wilson. You mean... You followed me here? Yes. Yes, I followed you here. It wasn't very difficult to get away from Mr. Travers. It seems I arrived just in time for my proof. In time? No! There, Shadow, there's your proof lying dead on the floor. (laughs) You're crazy, Vogel. You're a fool. You'll get the chair for this. I'm not as crazy as you think. <laughs> so I'm a fool, am I, Shadow? Now, you're the fool for coming here. You're the fool the police will find locked in this room with Wilson's dead body. They'll find you. I'll see that they do. And here's the gun you killed him with. <laughs> Why don't you dry the window, Shadow? It's only 15 stones for the floor. <laughs> Shadow. Shadow. Wilson. Wilson. Tell me. Quick. I am I'm done for. Quick. Oh. Quick, Wilson. Give me the proof. The proof, Wilson. Mm. Proof. The proof that you framed Senator Durham. Senator. Proof. Senator Durham. Come on, Wilson. Come on. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Durham. Oh, sorry. Oh. My baby. Wilson. <coughs> Wilson! Unlock the door, Margot. Unlock the door. The key's on the outside. Oh, Lamont, I, I heard a shot and saw Vogel running out, so I couldn't wait. What happened? I hadn't been so stupid. Waited so long, but I... I wanted to find out their secret before I spoke. And now... Now it's too late. Wilson is unconscious, I'm afraid. He's dying. Vogel has outwitted me. After all, that's it, Vogel. Shot me. You called bloody shot me. You burned for it. Wilson. Wilson. Wilson, listen to me. Listen and think. Think. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Tell me that, Wilson. Tell me that, and I'll see that Vogel pays for doing this to you. Senator Durham, now I remember. I'll show you. Help me into the next room. I'll show you. I will help you. Easy now. Easy. I'll get on the other side. Now, look. It's a recording studio. Yeah, that's right. It's my hobby. I'm an actor. Impersonator by profession. An an impersonator? Yes. Help me in that chair by the turntable. I impersonate people. I've imitated Senator Dunn's voice dozens of times. I... (laughs) Quick. Hand me the microphone. Turn on the switch. There, I can't hold out much longer. Here's the microphone. Just drop that needle on the wax record. Turn the switch. This is you, Wilson, speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to... Now. Yes, sir. This is you, Wilson speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. 
He hired me to impersonate the voice of Senator Durham. It's my voice on the soundtrack of the picture shown at Senator Durham's trial. I'll show how I did it. Listen. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get the contact. For the consideration. But you didn't send me my present of $50,000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, that, that's how it was done. That's how I did it. Here I'm innocent. You never heard of those words. I said, all right. Incredible. Your Honor, there is one more voice on the record at the end. Listen. The voice you have heard is that of Hugh Wilson, murdered by Anthony Vogel. He is the man who sought to frame Senator Durham. But Vogel failed. Just as in the end, all crime must fail. And all criminals pay the penalty of death. <laughs> order, order in the court. Whose voice was that? That, Your Honor, is the voice of the man to whom Senator Durham owes his vindication. The voice of the shadow. I've just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental.